was obviously a very large event for the school, a huge event and a milestone in its history. Uh, I, was not, no, I was no longer at the school at that time, but my father was on the board. One day when he was at his office uh, in downtown Victoria, he was visited by Claire Copeland, who was on the board of University School at the time. And Claire Copeland came with came to see him because he wanted to float the idea of a merger between the two schools. He thought it was a good idea and immediately con called for an extraordinary meeting of the St. Michael's board. That happened within a couple of days. I think it was a bit of a shock. The school was in serious trouble financially and the facilities I would describe as uh, shabby, worn, but there was a great spirit in the, in the school. It was at that meeting that the board decided that it was a good idea. And really it was a kind of perfect supply and demand situation. University school was land rich on this wonderful campus here, but very cash poor. And in contrast, St. Michael's was land poor because it was on a double lot between, stretching between Victoria Avenue at the front and Falkland Avenue at the back, and it was hemmed in by residences, houses on either side, and had no room to expand. But it was, if not ca uh, cash rich, it was at least solidly solvent with lots of fundraising momentum in place. But because of that dynamic and the sort of vision, I guess, and the faith of the St. Michael's board members, they immediately agreed. They canvassed the parents and the old boys, the St. Michael's school family, who also agreed to the proposition, and so the decision was made formal. But that then only set in train the very sort of delicate navigation, navigational journey of merging the two schools. So for example, what do you call the school? What do you do with the, the crests and the school colors? Um, who would be the headmaster of the combined school? And how would the board be constituted? So for example, um, the name of the school, would it be university school? Because it was the secondary school and not the, not the preparatory school. Would it be just St. Michael's school? Because St. Michael's was the stronger position. Would it be a brand new name or would it be a combined name? So obviously we know that the name was combined and partly I think due to the sort of rhythm of the name but also partly because St. Michael's definitely was in the driving seat at that point. Um, it was called St. Michael's University School. But somebody objected to the fact that it sounded like a possessive. St. Michael's School means the school of St. Michael's. There's, a, there's an apostrophe there. And if you look, if it was St. Michael's apostrophe University School, it looked to some people like, well, University School is owned by St. Michael's and we don't want that. So some very practical minded person just said, well, take the apostrophe out. There's no possession, it's just the name. And so that's what we see today. It's St. Michael's University School with no apostrophe. Very simply put, I'm a St. Michael's old boy and I'm a University School old boy. That was my connection. I, I came here, this was my school. Um, the fact that, yes, it was bigger here, it was run a little differently, it still had the same regimen of, a private, uh, of an English private school, that is what I brought, was brought up in. So changing schools, it was just a little bit different procedure. At St. Michael's, we had our own classroom and the teachers came to us. Here, you had to go to the classroom where the teacher was. That was the biggest difference. The crests are interesting. You can see behind me, there's the two crests. So do you have them side by side? Do you invent a new one? They, did, they wanted both to remind the new school family that it had these two heritages, these two histories. Um, and they thought it was a good idea to sort of overlap them. But there are strict rules about that. Um, they contacted the College of Heralds in Britain and asked them 
what are the rules here? And behind heraldry, there's hundreds of years of tradition, and they're very distinct rules. And when you overlap two shields like that, um, St. Michael's again wanted, okay, well, we're the senior, we're, we're becoming the dominant school here. Um, our, the overlap, our shield should be, or our crest should be on top. And the College of Herald said, no, 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 no. University school is the senior school, meaning not by grade structure, but in age. It was two years older than St. Michael's, so by the laws of heraldry, its corner had to be on top. And so that's what you'll see in those old photographs of that, that combined crest. When they combined it, St. Michael's stipulated that it would have one more board member than the number of university school board members. And it was agreed to both sides very happily was that the chairman of St. Michael's would become the chair of the merged United Board. That man's name was John Nation. Peter Caleb was the uh, head of St. Michael's School and became the head of the amalgamated school, St. Michael's University School. A daunting task. Uh, Post-Vietnam, trying to get boarding students. It was very difficult and Peter had to go out to Asia, to Hong Kong and to Mexico in order to gain enrollment for boarding. Um, for which again he was criticized for having too many students from Asia and from Mexico. They were a very loyal group and in fact one of them was Cliff Sun and here we are. Sun, the Sun Center. How amazing and we are so grateful Cliff. My thing today when I talked to a St. Michael's boy I said you know what my granddad would look down on this and say, how did my little school get to eat this? This is amazing. And I know that's how dad felt because he came up here after amalgamation. He was up here, to, he was doing admissions and he was doing a bunch of stuff at the school here. He wouldn't have done that if he didn't believe in the amalgamation. And to me, we're losing out, not making a bigger effort to reconnect with St. Michael's boys because Let's face it, there's not that much longer before there's not gonna be St. Michael's old boys and there's not gonna be university school old boys. And they're part of the richness of the history and we need to get that from both lots. This is St. Michael's, this is university school, but the name is just is now St. Michael's University School. It's, it's still our school.